Before you is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You are he looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could. Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. Is there anything you'd like to say to me? No. Cool. I wouldn't go that far. I'm sure there are cooler things than delivering a comically oversized novelty check to a cafeteria manager. But, sure, if that's what's cool nowadays. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun, lost gun, lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. When he said, don't worry, he actually meant be very worried. Are you all right, Harry? You seem anxious. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are gonna shoot themselves with it. <laughs> 